I'm uh, in an attic right now. It's about 33 degrees uh, here in Atlanta at a client's house. And uh, we had a problem <laughs> at uh, my client's house. And it was a water uh, pipe that broke. It froze and uh, expanded. I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's a pretty large gap here. There are actually three places on this that uh, exploded or burst, if you want to. Uh, in Texas, we used to call it busted. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about how to replace um, some some insulation that's been uh, water soaked. Uh, it's very important to get that uh, replaced as quickly as possible. Reason is, it's because mold grows into it, and of course, there's the biological uh, hazard of uh, black mold uh, which could be uh, deadly to uh, a lot of people. So what I'm going to talk to you again is, uh, is just replacing this and the procedures of how to go about replacing wet insulation. Okay so the first thing you want to do here is to take the insulation out that's been uh, wet. So I'm going to grab up here and just uh, pull this away. I try to move as slow as I can when I'm doing this because I don't want to get a lot of dust stirred up. And so you want to take this and uh, discard it as quickly as possible. Alright, so now I have three areas here that need to be replaced. Now I've already gone to the store and bought uh, all the supplies that I need to do this particular job. One of the things I wanted to do is to make sure that the room on the other side here that I'm insulating is kept warm. So I got the uh, warmest um, factor, R factor, that I could find, uh, which is R19. It'll do the job. Uh, it's 33 degrees today. Once I put this up, that room uh, will be uh, warm again and keep its energy and keep its heat. Also with this, as I put these up, is um, some insulation support. I'm going to show you how to put up the insulation and use these supports to keep everything up into the wall and where it should be. Now the first step in replacing insulation is to get a good measurement just to make sure that you cut off the right amount. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and take my tape measure and measure up against the wall to see how much goes inside. And I've got 93 inches to work with. So what I do here is just take my knife and open this package up. You want to make sure you don't cut any of the paper that's uh, wrapped around the insulation. So I'm going to take this, cut the bands like so, and then lay it out, and then measure it up. Once you've laid out the insulation, take your tape measure out go from end to end. What you want to do is find your mark. In this particular case it's 93 and then I'm going to go ahead and cut at 93. So what I do here is just take my measurement and make my cut. Move everything out of the way. Watch your fingers when you're cutting. Just go over this a couple of times to score it through and then you've got this cut just the way that you want it. And there you go, it's cut. Now the main idea, I know that I'm going to repl be replacing three panels. So I'm going to go ahead and make my three cuts and then go ahead and put those up all at the same time. When you're cutting several pieces, what you want to do is make your first cut. You know they're all going to be the same. Go directly back into, lay this over and use the bottom one as a template. And then I make my cuts all the same. Now what I'm going to do here is take my insulation that I've got by the way, I really like this kind. It's insulate. It's covered on both sides. It's nothing really to stir up. And so I'm going to go ahead and insulate this wall here, putting in everything that I need up to where I want it, like so. Now, the the trick to this is once you get something in place, is to use one of these supports. 
Basically all you do is just push it in and it grabs onto the wood. I'll show you that as a close up here in a second. So I just grab one of these supports, take it, push it in between the studs and it holds it automatically. Now the nice part about having these supports is once you put something up, it's there forever. So what I'm going to do here is just take one side, actually just push it straight in. In the middle, it grabs on both sides of the, of the studs and holds the insulation in. It's a great way to go. It's very, very quick. Now what I'm going to do here is go ahead and finish up the, the other three panels that I'm going to put in to complete the job. Little tip here when you're doing a job that's uh, you want to get in and out and everything, it's good to have a system. So what I'm going to do is take these uh, insulation supports, put them in my back pocket, and then be able to do the same thing over and over and over again. You can notice here what, what's happened is all the insulation has been taken out of these four, uh, I'm going to call them panels, and so I'm going to replace these as well. And this is basically what you do. Take the insulation, feed it inside, It goes both ways. So I'm going to go make sure that I push this all the way back in as far as I can. And so now I'm done. I repeat the process here. Make sure if you have a thermal heater uh, cord on your on your pipe like we do here uh, at this client's house, uh, you want to make sure that none of the insulation uh, wrapping or papers or anything is up against the, the wires because it is it does get warm. So you want to make sure there's plenty of clearance here as well. So that completes this section here. Okay, so there you have it. We've uh, replaced the whole uh, section here that was all wet. It all has new, brand new insulation in it, and it's ready to go. Just one quick word. Uh, when you're discarding some of your uh, insulation, the old stuff, you want to go ahead and bag it up. Some communities and some uh, counties within your state uh, or your particular area may have regulations on how to dispose this so you want to make sure that you uh, are compliant with uh, hazardous waste if you will so let's go green this is rick patterson